hello everybody in this video i am going to derive the expression for length contraction in special relativity so the contracted length l is equal to the proper length multiplied by square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared where v is a relative velocity of the object in motion with respect to the observer who is measuring the contracted length right so the derivation follows the same uh, procedure that we employed for deriving the expression for time dilation in special relativity so the setup is somewhat similar and uh, the arguments are quite close to the arguments that we use for the time dilation expression as well so here what is this device this device is uh, like a clock so we can call this as a clock like device this is ticking in a certain fashion just like the clock you have a light source come detector on one side and you have a mirror m which reflects the light beam incident on it back to the light source where the detector detects once it detects the reflected beam it will emit the next flash so this is basically a flashing device which works like a ticking clock so this can be called as a clock like device now this device is held by an observer o who is let's say at rest on earth we know that this rest means uh, uh, it is just an assumption we are considering earth to be an inertial frame here and therefore we say that uh, the observer o is at rest on the earth now if an identical device is carried by another observer o prime who moves with a velocity v with respect to this observer o then these two inertial frames are in relative motion with respect to each other and therefore this observer o should be able to measure any length on this observer o prime as a contracted length so that is the idea and therefore we'll be able to make some arguments and arrive at this expression so the derivation will be very simple in that sense right so in this frame of reference the length is a proper length for this observer o that is the distance between the light source and the mirror to be l naught is taken to be l naught here whereas the same observer O, if he tries to measure any lens here, the lens will be obviously contracted. Now, initially when the device is taken by this observer, if he is not in motion, that length also would be equal to the same L0 if he measures this. But if observer O measures the same distance between the light source and the mirror, when observer O prime is in relative motion, that length would be also contracted length and that length let us call as would be equal to l right so suppose if uh, the light is emitted the forward beam i call it it is emitted by the source it is going to reach the mirror but by the time it reaches the mirror already this entire setup or device is in motion at velocity v therefore the forward beam of light would travel an extra distance to reach the mirror because it is in motion that distance as measured by observer o would be l plus v times t1 let us call the t1 as the time for that light beam to start from the source and reach the mirror that is t1 as measured by observer o so both l and t1 are measured by observer o and v is the relative velocity between observer o and o prime now this is for the forward beam because it is going to travel an extra distance v t1 let us say this is the distance it would be equal to v t1 for the forward beam now for the reflected beam the device is for moving in the same direction further it is moving whereas the beam has to travel now in the opposite direction therefore it would meet the detector sooner so it has to travel now a distance less than this l therefore in the reverse direction 
the reflected beam would travel a distance L minus Vt1. So L is the distance between the light source and the mirror. For the forward beam, that is an additional distance that is V times T1 because at, with the velocity V for a time T1, this is moving. So the distance would be V times T1. For the reflected beam, that would be again Vt1 but in the opposite direction. So L minus Vt1 because the beam is going in this direction, the motion is in this direction, they are in opposite directions. Therefore, there is a negative sign. Now all the while, the light beam continues to travel in one direction for the same time t1 therefore the distance traveled by the light beam the forward beam would be c t1 and the distance traveled by the reflected beam would be c t2 where c is the velocity of light so the light is traveling for a time t1 in the forward direction so the distance that it would cover in that time is ct1 and in the reverse direction it is traveling for a time t2 the distance would be therefore ct2 and these two distances must be equal because l plus vt1 must be equal to ct1 and l minus vt1 must be equal to ct2 now for this observer in his frame of reference if he measures the time t0 which is proper time for this observer that time would be the time taken for the light beam from here to the mirror and back that distance is l0 in one direction another l0 in the reverse direction so 2l0 is the distance and the speed of light is c therefore 2l0 over c this is the time for the beam to travel from here to reach the mirror and back that is t0 right now in this case the times are different the forward time is t1 and the reverse time is t2 the total time t therefore must be t1 plus t2 so t is equal to t1 plus t2 now using these two equations one can write expressions for t1 and sorry t2 here right so t1 and t2 one can write expressions therefore we can say that from the first equation i call this one and two so from one i would write if i combine this two l on one side and take this to the other side c minus v t1 so t1 would be l over c minus v from the second equation t2 would be equal to l over if this comes this c plus v it will become c plus v therefore T1 plus T2 is equal to T which is equal to these two you have to add so L over C minus V plus L over C plus V so if you take the LCM which is C squared no minus V squared so L multiplied by C plus V plus l multiplied by c minus v that is equal to t so now we can proceed to simplify this expression to arrive at the length contraction expression so carrying forward from here t would be equal to lc plus lv plus lc minus lv so lv goes off c squared minus v squared on the left hand side we have t we know that this is a dilated time which is proper time over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared this is our expression for time dilation on the right hand side we have uh, 2 lc 
c squared if i take it out i will write this as 1 minus v squared c squared so if i can cancel the c out the square goes off the c goes off so you have 2l by c and we know that the t naught is 2l naught by c so 2l naught over c square root 1 minus v squared c square is equal to 2l over c 1 minus v squared over c squared right so now we we know that uh, these terms have to go off so if you bring this here you will have l naught 1 minus v squared c squared on one side and the contracted length l on the other side so we have the expression l is equal to l naught square root of 1 minus v squared c squared so this is the expected expression for length contraction which we have derived using a simple thought experiment please do check out our video on length contraction in special relativity as well as muon lifetime paradox in special relativity thank you